guys welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. now we're going to be covering the new uh, integrated block state uh, features for 2022.2 uh, this was a plugin before it became actual feature for the actual software so uh, I have some experience with it because I have constantly used it and I can kind of explain how the block states work and stuff like that uh, just to clear up some information, this plugin does not allow you to create new block states. It just allows you to uh, get the values and change uh, s some of the values and stuff like that. Uh, things like redstone dust, uh, the power v value, um, will not work because it's on a tick uh, update tick. So it will constantly reset. So keep that in mind when you're actually working with it. Some of these might not work, but it's not due to the plugin or anything like that. It's most likely due to the um, the game and how it actually functions. So there is uh, the block state um, Minecraft wiki page. I'll make sure to link this in the description. So basically what this does is it lists all the blocks that have different block states. There's actually quite a few of them. And we'll be taking a look at uh, some of them and just kind of going over some of the stuff. Now, the ones that you want to pay attention to are the ones that says Java Edition. I'm not sure if this is going to work on um, Bedrock or not. So if it does work on Bedrock or you want to try it, you can try the Bedrock values on a Bedrock Edition um, workspace. It might work uh, within... With that, though, being said, you would want to use the allowed values, uh, these ones right here under this column, and same thing goes for this one right here. It would be this one uh, that you would actually end up testing for. So, again, a lot of these values are um, pretty limited, so you can only test and set certain things. Uh, but, for example, if we were to work with a anvil today, uh, we can test for the direction uh, for the actual anvil and update it based on that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones. You can literally go through all these things. There's banners and all these different values and stuff like that. Basalt, uh, beds, uh, you can set all these values if you wanted to. Um, again, I'm not sure some of these will actually work because if it's occupied, I think that might be on a tick delay. So that might not work, but we can try it. Uh, all we need to do is basically test for a bed. That one, one might be a little bit more complicated because there's two blocks though. Uh, beehives, uh, these are basically the honey level. We can adjust the honey level. A lot of the farming blocks like crops and stuff like that are really easy to work with. You can actually adjust that. So we might end up doing that today actually. Uh, we can kind of get uh, some crops to grow on a faster tick rate or something like that. But again, it's under the allowed values or the ones that we're actually going to be wanting to pay attention to. So let's scroll down to a crop. Uh, we'll go and we'll do wheat because it's... Um, I've done it before and uh, with this plugin and it's just easier to demonstrate because of all the different block states. So we can use the top scroll thing up here to kind of find it. Uh, wheat crop would be the actual block. Now you can see that the name of the actual thing is called a um, age. So this is basically the value for what the block state is under. And then the values would be a number value. So if you see things like true or false, um, some of these might have true or false on them, uh, especially ones at the top. Um, those are logic, like these ones. These ones right here are true or false. Those are logic ones. And then you might see some with different words, like low, none, tall. Those are usually strings, so make sure that you set the um, proper one accordingly. But we're con we're, we want to know more about the um, wheat. So let's take a look at the wheat. We know that there's an age parameter for the um, wherever the wheat went. <laughs> Uh, where did it go? Uh, da, 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 wheat crop. There we go. So we know that the, the component is age. It uses numbers for the values. So we know that those are the values and the default number is zero. Maximum number is seven. So we can take that data and turn it into something. So I'm just going to move that to the other screen. And of course, it's kind of 
gone a little bit further <laughs> down or right, where is it there we go we got it back all right so let's uh quickly make a procedure um we might want to add a block uh just quickly to do something with so we can probably go ahead and do something like um auto composter make that a capital c there we go and i'm going to probably have to import a couple textures desktop i uh, think projects might have some i'm not sure if i have um block texture I might have deleted it uh let's see custom crops I might have blocks under here nope <laughs> okay uh, let's just make one quickly it doesn't have to be anything fancy just something to actually fill the blank space with so uh, we need a 16 by 16 texture for that so set that and then we'll grab our tools and other components that just seem to be on the other screen because I changed my resolution <laughs> just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see all right, so what we want to do is just kind of make a simple block. I'm just going to outline it in, in gray so we know this is our border of our block. And then we can use that texture. So let's save that. We'll just uh, save that to our desktop. We'll say block. And of course, you would want to actually give it a proper name, but... It's just for the tutorial, so it won't matter. Okay, so we have that part saved. We can go to our desktop now, and we can select our block texture. And then we can select that for our texture for the block itself. All right, so that part's done. Uh, we don't need to worry about rotation or anything like that. We're just going to be mostly messing around with procedures. So again, a lot of these values can be just left the same. Uh, I will place it down as stone because it just sounds better because it's already a rock material. I don't know why I like to do that, but it's better. All right, uh, we do want uh, something to happen on a tick update. So uh, tick update should be set to one. And as far, uh, actually, we could probably set it to random. And this will randomize the tick update. Uh, as far as other MBT, we'd probably be good for the keeping it the way it is um, now what we want to do is we want to create a tick update now you can set this up as much in any procedure but if we're going to make like an auto composter thing we want it to be kind of like automatic right so this is why we're using a block to do that um, again this the main focus is just to focus on the how the blocks work for the block state so we'll be covering the block state specifically uh, this extra stuff though, like creating the block and stuff is just optional. You can do that with anything really. All right, so what we want to do is we want to actually test for the block that we're going to be testing for, like for what kind of block. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is actually create a area uh, for where our affected area will be. And uh, that can be done with a repeater block. So we're just going to multiply that three times. We're going to need three local variables. Uh, pause. We'll just say uh, block X. Uh, and that will be BX. And then will be BY for the Y position. It needs to be a number as well. And BZ for the Z position. And this has to be a number as well. Okay, so once we've done that part, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a affected area. So uh, for this affected area, it'd probably be smart to keep it within a uh, area where water can reach. So we can just put it on top of the water. Uh, for this, uh, I believe we would need to do a five by five area. So what we can do is we can just add the repeater to do five times on each axis. Uh, this will, you can also adjust the Y axis. You might want this one a little bit higher. We'll go 16 just to make it a little bit better. And uh, then what we need to do is we need to specify our position. So what we want to do is we want to offset, actually this should be a little bit uneven number. So we'll do 15, 
or do 11. 11 is easier to work with because then it's uh, five blocks down and then we can basically count upwards. So X will be our offset uh, for our default position. Now this is the position that we will constantly start from. So we're going to go X minus and then we want X minus two because that's half of five minus one, which is the value that we'll be currently running at. So two is basically what we're going to be uh, subtracting by. We also need the X position. So what I'm going to do is grab the block and set our X here for um, negative two. Then we want our Y position. This should be set to the same method. So again, 11 minus one and then divided by two. So that would be five, right? So we're going to set that to five and then we can get rid of that X block and we'll put our Y block in here. And then what we want to do is our Z position. This should be the same position as our uh, Z position down here, which is five. All we need to do is update this part right here. All right, so that part's done. Now we need to actually set up the cycle process. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually set um, Z and X down here. So we need to actually create a math program or math operation to basically increase this value. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase this value by the same value and then it's going to count up. So this is basically going to go start at um, whatever coordinates minus two. Um, that should be minus two, not minus five. And then what it's going to do is count up five times because this repeater runs five times. And this is basically what's counting up the variable. Uh, this needs to be again set to Z for the same thing to work. And then it's going to count up. And once it reaches a five, it's going to go and pass it over to this repeater. So that's where we want to actually reset Z. So this is basically where that part comes in. We need to basically place the reset part right here. So it goes back to the default variable. And again, we can just use this repeater uh, multiple times. We'll update this to X. And the last one that we want to do is Y. So set Y like that. And then we want to make sure that we update our or reset our X and Z coordinates. So that's the basic timer system that will go through the process of uh, testing for the area. It's very simple. Uh, the only thing that we need to do now is actually work on our condition for what we're testing for. So this is where the block states come in. Uh, we can basically test for a couple things. Uh, let's test if the block state is, um, let's see where it is under this. I'm not sure if it's under its own tab or not. Might be under here now. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of these uh, blocks here, uh, these are... The enum properties and integer properties, the ones with the age and stuff, these are the ones that are basically going to be using the block state. So we'll be able to test for these things here. Uh, there's a few other things like um, Boolean. Boolean is your logic. Um, direction is, I'm not sure if direction is part of the um, actual block state or not. We have the enum, which is basically the string, I believe, if I remember correctly. So uh, basically that would be your um, property tag. Again, age is our property tag. So we would basically set that. This is integer is basically the one for numbers again. So integer, this is already set up for the crops um, because we would be testing for a default value and stuff like that. Uh, there's also ones down below, I believe, or somewhere around here that you can actually set them to. Uh, that should be under block management. And if you scroll down a little bit, you should have your options to set them as well. So I'm pretty sure these are probably all um, possibly, maybe not that one and that one, but these three right here should be the ones to set your block states. So again, uh, what we want to do is we want to test if a block exists. Uh, we're going to use um, a operator uh, for testing if the block is a certain thing. 
And then what we want to do is set that block to our wheat. So we need to find wheat. I'm not sure where it is. Uh, wheat, there we go. Uh, that should be block. So we'll set that one to our wheat crop. And I think that's the crop, right? Blocks wheat, yep, that's the one. All right, and then what we need to do is make sure that the coordinates for this is set to the coordinates for the actual area. So we're going to just set this to X, Y, and Z. So this will test every coordinate inside this area that we're testing. Uh, after, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the block state is, uh, we'll just say if it's between a certain value. So say we'll set test if it's one. So if block state, uh, we need to get the property again. So we're going to place one of these down, place that in here. And we can actually test if directly into this uh, condition because we don't need to um, do that uh, specifically with the other one. So we could just test this directly onto this block here. And what we can do is do the exact same thing just with a block state. So again, uh, we want to test if the age is zero. And then what we can do is we can set a random number to a between one and um, uh, one and seven. So what we can do is there's actually random blocks under the math which we can set a variable to. Now um, we might not even need to set a variable. To tell you the truth, we could probably just use an integer because that's what we're working with. It's an integer, so we want to make sure that we use the right value for that. Uh, if it's point form, it won't work. You would have to format it, uh, and that might be a little bit harder to work with. So let's go with the integer one, and we want uh, a number, a value between one and seven. So we're going to be setting up that like that, and we're only going to be running this if it's at stage zero. So uh, now we just need to set the block or the value. So we would set our integer. Now this should be the same type of thing that we set up. Now your uh, value for your name for your actual block state should be in here. And your value should be in the other selection. So again, we want to make sure that these blocks are set up properly. We're going to use the variables for these so it has the same affected area for it to run. Now for this part, what we're going to do is we're just going to randomize the number between uh, 1 and 7. So it will generate a crop stage between 1 and 7. Um, this will happen every time that it detects a wheat crop that is at stage 0. So it'll be really cool to see how this actually works. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's just test it and then we'll save our block and everything like that we can place it down and we'll go ahead into um, the game and give it a quick run all right so we're now in game and what we need to do is obviously hose some of the area so we're gonna just grab a diamond hole and we'll just hoe a five by five area and we'll set up uh, probably a water bucket so we can get that all situated. Whoop. Um, that should be there. Alright, that should be good. And then what we can do is we can just put a water bucket right in the middle. And we can put our block on top. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a slab upside down so we can just have something to place it on and then we want to scroll down and grab our block so this is our block here and we're going to place that down and uh, actually before we do that uh, we should probably place the seeds as well so we want our wheat seeds and we're just going to place this down like that and then what we can do is we can place that like that and it should tick randomly so Basically, when it ticks the first time, what it will do is it will check for any of the crops to actually be stage zero. So this one is no longer stage zero. 
that would be stage one. So any of the other blo or blocks it will basically kick in. So I'm not sure when that will happen. Uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But um, it should randomize the growth for all of them between one and seven. So we can't actually test anything. I didn't set up any condition to test if the thing, so. Just heard some bubbles or something. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. All right, so as you can see that it randomly growed everything from one to seven, it's randomly grow like uh, this the stages of the crops are all randomized uh, that shouldn't be stage um, seven already and oh I just changed some uh, other stuff too so I guess it's trying to grow a um, bunch of stuff uh, did it just remove some of the other crops I think it might have removed some of the other crops shouldn't do that I don't think We'll just wait one more tick to see if it actually works. Because it should not actually trigger it now. Because all of these are one stage above. Oh, it does. How about that? Oh, it shouldn't do that. I'm not sure why it does that. But in the sense it should properly work uh, for testing so we are testing for the um, stage zero we're testing for age and let's see here maybe it's because it's um, a random number so we might need to run this on a particular side so it might need to be run on server side so for that what we would need to do is basically just make a condition place all this in on our server side so we we'll grab that go to our not which will basically say not client side and then we want to go to our world data and then grab our client side so this should most likely what was happening was it was probably running on both server and client which would allow uh, if it was on client it would basically say that the stages for all the blocks were zero so that's probably what was going on so we would want to run it from the server side uh, in this case so it would basically test for specifically the server side which is the block side that isn't um, being run uh, visually through the player uh, we can give this another try uh, quickly and then we'll see if this works all right so we're back in game I'm gonna place down a bunch of other crops just to run another test just to make sure that everything is working properly we'll place that down and what should happen is they should all update at the same time and uh, as you can see just a few of them I've upgraded to another stage I think that one's on stage two and I think the other one behind it's like stage one so uh, that one's stage one so that one one won't run either and oh that one did run Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that then. Well, let it run one more time and see if it does updates the um, thing. You might have to specify the exact stage instead, and um, we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Maybe it runs on client side because it should be running on server side only, right? So i'll just give it a couple seconds to see if it updates all the blocks again if it does then it might be a bug with the system but should be working as far as i know nothing has changed but we'll just quickly check might not update again Yeah, I would say it probably won't update again. I'll just give it a couple more seconds to tick. But uh, I'll set the time. Set day. Yeah, it looks like it won't uh, tick again. So that running it on server side should should fix the issue. Um, yeah, so that's basically that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. 
and I will do my best to answer uh, your questions for the block states and stuff like that. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, write the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.